Right now, I'm going to show you the basics of creating an animation inside of Photoshop. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and welcome to Back to Basics Weekend. And this week, by popular request, I'm going to show you guys how to create an animation inside of Photoshop. We're going to start with the very basics of how an animation works and then I might have a trick or two up my sleeves. All right, so here we are inside of Photoshop and I have this ball that I created and what I'm gonna do is we're gonna animate it across the screen. So why don't we just start with it on the left and I wanna move it from the left across to the right side of the screen. So the first thing you wanna do when you're gonna be doing any animation in Photoshop is you need to go to the control center for animation, which is our timeline. So go up under Window, Timeline. So if you're in Photoshop CC or newer, this is standard. If you're in Photoshop CS6, if you don't have CS6 extended, you're not going to have the animation and 3D features. If you have CS6 extended, animation and 3D is there. Earlier versions of Photoshop, this will not work for. I'm sorry, because in CS6, they changed the way animation works. Okay, so right now, if you see this little box here, that means we're in frame-based animation. What we want to do is go to video frames. So what we do is go to the options at the far right over here, and then where it says convert to video timeline. Click on there, and notice your timeline is going to look different. Let's just open this up. Okay, I can see a few layers here because I have layers, and some of these layers are in there that we might bring later on. So we're just going to hide them for now. And the one we're focusing on here is our ball. And if I click on it, I see it's Layer 2, if I change the name, watch here, it's Layer 2 there in the timeline, but watch if I change it to Ball. It also changes it there in the timeline. Now, if I choose this little arrow here, I can expand the timeline so I can see what's going on. So right now, our animation is going to last about 5 seconds. And how can I tell that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if I hit the space bar, or hit the play button here, we're going to see that this is going to go for five seconds. Great, but nothing happened. Well, what we need to do is we need to make the movement. Okay, I'm going to show you how this works now. It's quite simple. Let's go to the beginning. Now, we're going to twirl down this little arrow here, and you're going to see options here. All right, so what we want to do is this is our starting position, and this is us in time. So we're at the beginning, so this means that at the beginning of the animation, this is where the ball is going to start. Now, if I wanted the ball to start from somewhere else, I'd just move it to somewhere else, and that would be the starting position. But in this case, I want the starting position to be here. So at zero frames, this is where it is. Now, we're going to move this across in time, and then we want this to end up somewhere else. So maybe I want it to go from here across to about here, and I want it to take about three seconds. How do we do that? Well, it's quite simple. The first thing we need to do is see we've got three options here. Position, opacity, and style. So our position is obviously where is this in space? So to start an animation, turn on the stopwatch. Now you'll see these little yellow diamonds. These little diamonds are keyframes. So the first keyframe is now set so that means it doesn't matter where this is the rest of time. When this playhead is on that keyframe, this is going to be here because this is the starting position. Does that make sense? All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to change this. So I'm going to move that playhead forward to three seconds. And you can see the, you know, the seconds are there. And of course, if you want to extend this, just drag it. Or if you want to shorten it, just drag it. So you can change the duration that simply. Okay, so we're three seconds forward, and now we want something to change. At that three second mark, I'm going to drag this across. I want it to go here. So that means at the three second mark, now it's going to be a different position. Now, because we turned on that stopwatch for position, it's tracking the position. And then when I released, notice it added another keyframe. So that's as simple as it gets. So if I drag this, notice what happens is it creates tweens or in-between frames between these two keyframes. 
Now, if I didn't want the animation to start until one second, so I want it to stay stationary for a second, I would just move this keyframe to the one second mark and notice nothing's gonna happen. But then it hits that keyframe and then it moves to the other position. I can make this work shorter. If I move that keyframe to the two second mark, notice what happens. It goes from there. Now it changes position. So how it works is the two keyframes of those little diamonds set the animation. It says the first keyframe is going to be here. The second keyframe, I want it over here. And then depending on how far apart or how close those are, whenever that playhead hits that first one, it's going to start animating between the first one and the second one. So that animation is always going to happen between the two keyframes. In fact, let me hit the space bar and let it play. Notice it goes across and then it'll just sit stationary because there's no more keyframes in between. So if I want the animation to work slower, then what I'll do is I'll stretch these keyframes further apart, hit the space bar and notice now it moves slower because it's still covering that same distance, but now it's doing it over more time. Let's go here. So now if I go from the beginning, notice now it's moving very slowly because it takes four seconds for it to fill the gap between those two keyframes. If I move the two keyframes together very closely, it still has to cover the same amount of distance, but it has less time to do it. Watch. Now it goes very fast. Okay, so I'm going to set this to go about three seconds. And we're going to take this from one second. So it's going to st sit stationary for one second, and now it's going to go for two seconds. All right. Now we're going to up the ante just a little bit. Because one of the things you might notice is it looks a little bit stuttery, and that's because every frame is sharp. If you shoot video properly, you generally shoot with a slower shutter speed so you get a little bit of natural motion blur in there. And that motion blur smoothens out that movement. So why don't we do that right now? Now, of course, there's no way to build this into Photoshop. So what we have to do is we need to cheat. So I'm going to copy this ball, Control J, and now I've made a copy of it. Notice that copy started where the playhead was. So we need to drag that over so now it matches. So what I want to do is I want to apply a little bit of a blur effect on here. So we're going to choose Filter, Blur, and we're going to give this motion blur. Now let's just give it a little bit of motion blur from side to side. Click OK. OK, so let's repeat. So we're going to create that position here. Turn it on. Then we're going to move to where we want to go. Notice that layer underneath is moving because we've already moved it. Now we're just going to drag this one over to the same spot and release. And now both of these should be moving together. Now watch this. If I hide the top one and we watch the motion, watch this motion. See how it looks a little stuttery? Now watch what happens if I hide that and we apply the layer of the motion blur. See how it appears to move smoother. But if we increase the speed of this, it'll be even more pronounced. Watch this. We do a quick two second animation with the regular layer. See how it stutters? Let's do it with the blurred layer. See how it appears to be smoother. So programs like After Effects allow us to apply a motion blur. In this case, we're going to have to fake it. So the way to fake it is, as you've seen, I've created two layers. Now, this layer is only going to be visible where I show it. So if I've got both these layers turned on and I click and I drag to here, Notice now that you don't see the blurred layer. You're only going to see the blurred layer when we hit that keyframe. Same thing here. If we go to the very end and we shorten that, now the blurred layer is only going to appear during the animation. Let's watch it. So it's sharp, blurred for the movement, and then sharp again. Now, if you wanted, you could apply a little bit of a fade to the end, and I'll show you how you can do that. Is the quick way is just actually just to use a transition and we're going to set a short, very, very short uh, blur here. We're going to set the duration as low as we can. 
and then we just get a fade and we're going to drag it on each end. And now what will happen as we apply this, see how it's slowly going to fade out that sharp layer so it actually fades it rather than getting that harsh transition. And let's watch that animation. Boom. So there's limitations that exist in Photoshop's animation that don't exist necessarily in things like After Effects or Flash, which is a program I used for many years. So a lot of my Photoshop animation techniques come from my Flash experience and my little bit of After Effects experience. So we're able to go beyond those limitations by just kind of hacking it with these kind of tricks. So maybe when we get to the end here, the other thing we might want to do is maybe we want to show these icons. So let's turn on everything here. And then we're going to go there, we're going to animate that. All right, so we could move this ball to get the position right, but I think it's going to be a lot easier just to move these overlay elements that I created. So let's just select both of those, and I'm just going to nudge them over with the arrow key. Great. So if we want these to end as our ending animation, we just scroll down, notice that that Photoshop fun and the other shapes ones there. You can drag this up if you want to see more of the timeline. And so this is going to end about here. And all we need to do is just pull these over, which hides their visibility until we hit that point right here. So if we go back, those are going to be invisible. Now they're going to appear. We want them to blend in smoothly to fade in. So we're going to go back. So here we are back at our animations and we just want to do a fade. And I'm going to change the duration of this to one second. So it's going to be a slower fade than what we used. We drag it in here. And notice as we do this, these are going to slowly fade in. All right, let's test our animation. What we need to do is hit our play button or our space bar, and here we go. And now if you want this to continuously loop, choose the options over here, and then choose loop playback. And now when it plays, it'll just keep looping so you can see it. And if you wanted that fade to happen a little sooner, we're just going to start that one a little bit sooner. And let's do the same with this one here. So we're just dragging those in. And now we can play these together. And notice now we can change that timing. So when you're done with the animation, of course, you're going to be asking, OK, how do I get this out of here? How do I use it? What we want to do is we want to work with the file. And what do we want to do? We want to export that file. And when we want to export that file, we want to render video. So we're going to go in here and the render video is going to pop up. Now we have a couple of options here. The one we want to focus on is H.264, which is the standard for just about everything. If you want to keep it at the document size, high quality, just click render and it will render out and make it a video. Now there are presets. So you could, if you wanted, you could go under these presets. And you could choose different presets here. Now, obviously, if it goes into YouTube at an HD, it's going to letterbox it at the top and the bottom if it's not the right dimensions. The dimensions you'd want to be using are 16 across by 9 up, and that's the aspect ratio. So for HD, it would be 1920 pixels across, 1080 pixels up. That would be standard HD. So if you want it to render at those particular sizes, you can do that. But sometimes you might want it tall or thin for banners, headers, different things like that. So you can do any shape or size that you want. And of course, there's another option that we could do here. If we choose File, Export, and this time we're going to use the Save for Web Export. Now, if we go into Save for Web and we change this to a GIF, it's going to take a while for this to process it. And so why don't we do this? Let's save this as an animated GIF. So we're going to choose the Save option. We'll drop it on the desktop. Click Save. And look at that. And now you'd want to upload this to your website and then link that if you wanted to put it on social media like Facebook because they don't natively support it. If you don't have a website, uh, just go to Giphy and uh, you can just Google that and find it, and it's a good way to do that. So anyway, guys, I hope you found this Basics on Animation interesting. Um, if you did, let me know in the comments underneath. Now, I've also been thinking about creating a full-length course on animation in Photoshop. Not video, but 
pure animation. Now, I don't know if motion graphics and animation in Photoshop is something you guys are interested in, but I've got tons of tricks up my sleeve. If that's something you might be interested in, let me know in the comments and I'll consider making that. And anyway, guys, if you're new here, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Really happy to have you here. Uh, consider hitting that subscribe button and you'll get a new video from me every single week and turn on the notifications so YouTube will let you know when those are uploaded. And currently we're on three times a week. Every Tuesday I upload a video. Every Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific time, we're doing our live stream. And every weekend, we're doing our Photoshop back to basics. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button, enter dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.